Today this video looks at the auditing of measurement system analysis for variable equipment. Watch this video and see whether the auditor audits this effectively. So continuing the discussion then about measurement system mm -hmm. analysis, uh, again I see from the control plan that you use a number of dial test indicators. Yeah. Uh, this is one that we saw when we were, were on the shop floor mm -hmm. being used in a, in a measurement jig. Yeah. Um, so I see here from what you've shown me then, just to, to say where we got to, you've taken 10 parts, three appraisers, three trials. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested to understand what's your understanding of here, appraiser A. Yeah. 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 So why do you think the spreadsheet is telling you then that appraiser A is out of control? What, what does that mean to you? Because you're in charge of MSA. We normally just look over this side at the um, gauge R&R &R numbers. So the fact that it's telling us over here that appraiser A is out of control, I'm not sure if that's part of... Um, so okay. yeah, I'm not sure. We'd probably need to well, talk, uh, yeah, maybe I, talk I will to be Jim. following up um, on, on evidence of your competency in MSA because yeah. I would have expected you to be able to answer that question in terms of having basic statistical knowledge. Yeah. Now let's have a look at the uh, results then. So explain to me how you analyse the results of the study. So the spreadsheet will um, take all of the raw data and it will throw out these, um, these numbers. So the first thing we look at is the gauge R&R. &R. So in this case it's 15.91. And how are you going to make a decision whether that's acceptable? So we, uh, we base the decision on the um, between 10 and 30 is we deem to be acceptable. So less than 10% would be okay. Um, greater than 30 would not be okay. And somewhere between 10 and 30, we normally assume that that's, yeah. that's satisfactory. And you know by now, the question I'm going to ask is about customer specific yeah. requirements. Can you yeah. find for me for your two automotive customers, have they got any requirements about the acceptability criteria? Anything above 10 would need um, customer approval. Right, and what do you think my question to you is going to be? Um, have you got customer approval in this case? And have you? Uh, not to my knowledge. Right. Again, we'd need to so just So we are finding with... this recurring issue as we're going through the audit about your understanding and implementation of yeah. the customer specific requirements. Yeah. Uh, one final question before we move on then. What is your understanding of the term NDC? That is um, number, I know what it stands for, number of distinct categories um, and, and five. So we base our, our acceptance on a minimum of five, NDC of five or more. So in this case, we've got NDC of eight. So we would call that acceptable. Okay. And where do you think that number of five comes from? I think that comes from the fourth edition AIAG um, blue book. Okay. Well done. Yeah. Okay. And one last question then about EV and AV. Yeah. So what is that telling you about the variation? So we use this to understand um, where the biggest contribution to... Um, the MSA result comes from, whether it's the equipment or the appraiser. So in this case, we've got an EV of 15.42, an AV of 3.94. So the equipment is contributing more to the overall gauge R&R &R result. Okay, thank you. So I will follow up about the competency. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I understand the, the overall results. Thank you. Thank you. So the good thing in this video is the auditor isn't just looking at the study and moving on. They are asking the auditee detailed questions about their statistical understanding of the results. And that does relate back to ITF 16949, 9.1.1.3, Knowledge of Basic Statistical Concepts. So once the auditor had verified that the organization had taken 10 parts, done three trials with three appraisers, before they looked at the interpretation of the results, they saw that appraiser A was shown in the spreadsheet of out of control. 
So the auditor rightly questioned the organization on the understanding of what out of control means. And that could be that a rogue value had been inputted into the spreadsheet, but what it would indicate is that there was a special cause within the results recorded for appraiser A that needs investigation before moving on to look at the results. The auditor then moved on to have a look at the results and saw that there was a gauge R&R variation of 15.91 and rightly questioned the organisation on what was the acceptance criteria either defined by the organisation or customer specific requirements. And by referring to customer specific requirements, it was clear that any gauge r and r variation above 10% requires communication within the cusp with the customer. And in this case, they had not done that communication. The auditor then didn't leave it at that. They went on to question what was the auditee's understanding of the number of distinct categories and what was the auditee's understanding of the EV equipment variation versus AV, which is the appraiser variation. So what were the key learning points? To do an effective audit of measurement system analysis, the person in charge needs a clear understanding of measurement system variation and basic statistical concepts. So auditors do need to understand that if they're going to do an effective audit. The second is making reference to customer specific requirements for acceptability of measurement system analysis studies. That is not defined in IETF 16949. IETF refers to customer specific requirements taking into account customer reference manuals. 